Let's take a closer look at what Professor Kotos means by purpose and audience. For example, we have a writer who is a graduate student at Iowa State University, and she is writing an email to her friend in Australia. The friend in Australia is going to be the audience for the email. Even if there's only one person, we consider her the audience because she is the person that is going to receive and read the email. She's the one that we need to write appropriately for. The purpose of the email is to apologize for not sending an email for a long time. So what does our writer do? She chooses language that will be appropriate for her friend in Australia, language that will convey the apology that the writer intends to convey. She chooses this language. My research has really kept me busy over the past semester, and she thinks this is a good way of beginning her apology to her friend. In English, an apology is a pretty good one if it includes the reason why something wasn't done or why the act that needs to be apologized for was committed. So that works. Let's change the audience and purpose to one that is very important also for graduate students. What if the audience is professionals in the field and the purpose is introducing research articles? Our graduate students, after they do their research, want to be able to write an article and submit it to a journal so it will get published. Okay, so the writer is the same. She's talking about her research, but the purpose and the audience are different. What if she chooses to introduce her research by saying, my research has really kept me busy over the past semester. Will that work? Is that a good way to start a research article? No, I don't think our writer would be very successful if she started her research article with, my research has really kept me busy over the last semester. When the audience is professionals in the field, that's a large audience of people that the writer doesn't know. They don't really care that her research has kept her busy over the past semester. Plus, when the purpose is to introduce a research article, we want her to talk about the research and we don't want her to refer to the time that is specific to the moment that she is writing. So the language is going to have to be different for starting a research article. But what should the language choice be in this context? Let's take a look at what some successful researchers have done. You read an article a couple weeks ago about students' perceptions and experiences of mobile language learning, and it was published in Language Learning and Technology. Let's see how they started their research article. Their purpose was to introduce their research article. Their audience was professionals in the field. So these authors chose this language. In recent years, researchers have begun to investigate language learning using various mobile devices such as mobile phones, e.g. Wong, Chin, Tan, and Lu, 2010. Pocket PCs, e.g. Wong and Liu, 2010. And Apple iPhones, e.g. Zhang, Svect, Koper, 2010. So their opening statement for their research article is very different from what our writer wrote to her friend in Australia. This is the kind of language that works for the introduction of a research article. It opens up by introducing the larger field of research and by indicating that there has been some work done in this area. They set the stage for what is to come next.